Creating movement in your hips is extremely important for hip mobility. However, for many of us, we have developed adhesions or even scar tissue in your fascia in and around the hips. But first you have to understand how important the fascia system is and what it's actually doing. So it's here to protect us, essentially. It's your connective tissue. It's a component of your connective tissue that holds your system structures, muscle fibers, cells together. So it's not just a muscle to a bone, it's literally innervating everything. So if we're simply looking at just movement that might not be able to actually release the hip joints enough. So it's really important that we perform a fascia decompression technique as well as combining that with hip mobility exercises. The combination is pretty well magic. Once we can actually loosen up the hips by diving deep into the tissue with the combination of yes, creating movement and almost gently forcing the hips to get into a greater range of motion, then you'll truly notice a significant increase in your hip mobility. So grab your rolled up towel, let's jump on into the set, and I'm gonna show you my favorite routine. The first fascia decompression position we're gonna do, is gonna be right on your left hip flexor. So of course we're gonna be working on the left and then the right side. Grab your rolled up towel and nice and slow, position it right here, it's directly underneath your ASIS bone. It's pretty well at the top portion of your quad, but just a little bit higher. As you approach the towel, bend your opposite leg, so your right leg to its side, and then stay up on your elbows like this, just for stability. And of course you can bring yourself flat to the floor to get yourself a little bit more comfortable. Now the first thing we wanna do is connect to that breath, but you have to always breathe in and out through the nose and try to breathe very slowly. That's gonna increase oxygen absorption, help the melting of the connected tissue, but also rid the carbon dioxide and toxins away from the body. Once you've settled in and you're maintaining that breath, nice and slow, start to surge left or right. And I'm not saying rock left or right, search and stick with that area. The slower you move, the deeper you're gonna get in the layers of our connective tissue. Now, in addition, you can lift your left leg off of the floor slightly, only if you can, you can slowly bring your leg to the left or to the right. These are all just suggestions to help you get deeper in this position to really open up and unlock that hip. So we wanna spend a minimum of three minutes here. Now that may seem like a decent amount of time, but it actually goes by quite quickly. But we need that time to actually allow the tissue to release. So now once we spend about three minutes here, sure, you can spend longer if you would like. All we're gonna do is slowly rotate over to the left portion of the hip where it's on the exact same plane. So now this is gonna be targeting more of that TFL area and you can bend your elbow, rest your head in your hand, you can prop yourself up, you can use bolsters or pillows to help support you, but we wanna just really sink in and melt this area. So this would be kind of considered that second position now. We just transitioned to the TFL. Now same rules apply. We wanna be spending that minimum of three minutes here. Connect to that breath. You're the one in control. Slowly search for that pain. You might wanna search again more towards the front, which is gonna tie into that hip flexor area. Or maybe you wanna search a little bit more towards the back into different areas of the glutes. Listen to your body, search for the pain, find the pain and release it out of the body. So now once we spent three to even five minutes here, let's exhale up and off and we're gonna be working in the same plane, the same height, but directly on the glute. And you're gonna notice in your glute that you have your sit bone. Have the towel positioned approximately just above. Now, if you wanna search around and have it a little bit higher in the glute medius area, by all means, that's, that's all great. We have to work all of these areas. But let's start by laying on your back, bend your knees, exhale up, lift your glute up, and now position the towel on the left glute, primarily just above that sit bone, and now bring your body weight back down. Now, same rules apply, connect to that breath, spend a minimum of three minutes here. And once you started to settle in and you feel the pain even starting to subside a bit, let's start to search. And you can, again, very slowly search to the left or to the right. You can internally or externally rotate your left leg. You can even lift it up and off of the floor to help create more movement and to get a little bit deeper in this area. And the piriformis is located in and around this area. So even those who have issues with sciatica. This is a wonderful position to target because it's gonna help decompress this area to take pressure off of that nerve. So once you spend, again, three minutes or so here, 
Let's exhale up and off. And now start just moving that hip around. See if you've noticed any changes already. So once you've done the left side, repeat this cycle to the right side. Let's do the fascia decompression component first. Now that you've completed the fascia decompression, now let's start creating some mobility, some intentional mobility exercises in and around the hips. Let's start off with more of a gentler approach to mobilizing the hips. Sure, you've heard of these before, but they're windshield wipers. And these are great. You can either do these laying flat on your back or being upright. But let's have your legs directly in front of you about hip distance apart. You can even bring them a little bit wider to shoulder width apart if that makes more sense for your body type. Now, all we're gonna do is very slow. I said that, very slow. Bring your knees and your legs over to the right. And then we're gonna exhale and then come back and bring them all the way over to the left. Then hold that for an inhale, exhale, and then repeat this. So try to do 10 to 15 on each direction. If you want, you can absolutely do more. This isn't a, a very fatiguing exercise, but it's gonna help loosen up the joint, create some more of that, the synovial fluid in and around the hip joints, just to get them a little bit more lubricated and ready for the next exercises. Next, we're moving into the seated leg raise. So you've probably done a leg raise when you're on your back, but it's a lot different when you're seated on the floor. This is primarily focusing on the hip flexors. Now, people who have tight hips or tight hip flexors, sure, they can be compressed, they can be, of course, tight, but they can also be very weak. So when we release and then strengthen, it's an amazing combo to create mobility and strength in and around this area. So all we're gonna do is be seated just like this. And let's start with the left leg. So we're gonna perform 10 repetitions if you can, if you wanna do more by all means, respect your own limits. Try to keep that left leg straight, try to be as upright as you can. It will be a little bit easier the further you lean back. And then we're gonna exhale, lift that left leg up, inhale, bring that leg back down. Seems pretty simple, I know but trust me, it's pretty difficult. You might even feel a cramp in your hip flexor or even in your rectus femoris, which is one of your hip flexor muscles that ties into the quad. So once you've performed about eight to 10, then we're gonna switch on over and do that on the right leg as well. So our final exercise, which is kind of more so of just a movement, it's simply sitting in a deep squat. Now you may notice that your ankles are restricting you from getting deeper. Maybe it's your hips, your knees, your low back, but slowly bringing yourself deeper into a squat is significantly gonna help open up the hips. And this isn't something that's gonna necessarily happen overnight, but it's something that you should be performing every single day, even if it's just for a couple minutes. So all we're gonna do is stand properly like this, feet about hip distance or even shoulder distance apart. You can slightly bring your feet out a little bit wide like this, so you're externally rotating the feet. Now, nice and slow, we're gonna sink on into a squat. Now, try to get as low as you can, but you may feel like you're gonna have to tip back or you're losing your balance and you just can't do that right away. So another great variation is either holding on to something, hold on to a table or a countertop or a pole or something so that you can use that as leverage and then just slowly sink into it there while you're holding on to something. But my favorite way of doing this is up against the wall. Now, the reason why is because sure, you can lean up against something, but now you can integrate a little bit of PNF, which is proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation. I really hope I said that correctly. What we're gonna be doing as we're sinking deep into the squat is we're gonna have our arms on the inside of our knee joints. So as you're pulling your knees in towards the midline of your body, you're using your arms to push your knees towards the outside of your body. So you wanna pull the knees apart, kind of as far apart as you can, feel that stretch, but now pull them in and hold it there. Once you've done three to five breaths, relax. Take a few breaths and then perform that three additional times. That alone is something I perform before every single time I do squats or any leg workouts. It opens up the hips, it gets everything moving. I feel absolutely amazing. But now let's break this down so that you can follow a full-blown legitimate routine. First thing we wanna start off with is the fascia decompression positions. So we perform 
three minutes on the hip flexor, then we move to three minutes on the TFL, which is that side hip area, then three minutes on the glute. So we're gonna be doing that on the left side first, and then the right side. Once you've completed that, you're gonna notice a big difference in your hips already. Then we're moving on to some of the exercises and movements. So first one is the windshield wipers. So perform 10 to 15 repetitions on each side if you can. If you can go up to 20, that's even better. Perform that three times. Then we move on to the hip flexor exercise, which is the seated leg raise. Perform 10 to 12 repetitions on that left leg if you can, and then 10 to 12 on that right leg, take a rest, and then perform that three times as well. Then we move into that deep squat variation and find what variation works the best for you right now. And if that's holding on to something and you don't get very far, that's okay. Just slowly try to make progress every day, every few days or every week. And then eventually you'll be able to sit in that deep squat without really any resistance or the need to fall back or lose your balance. Now, of course, you can incorporate that up against the wall, integrating the PNF, which I personally love. And that wraps up the routine. So let me know in the comments below if this has helped you out. I also understand that this can be a fairly long routine. There's times where you can do the entire routine, but there's also times where you can pick and choose. But to start off the first time, I highly recommend doing the full thing. Dedicate about 30 minutes to this routine and your hips are going to thank you. So again, give this video a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.